Hello and welcome to Full Armor Crusader. I, uh, if you're accidentally hopping onto this video, stick around. I think you may enjoy it. This isn't going to be your typical YouTube channel. And uh, this video is me trying to explain to you what this channel is, what it's going to be about, and actually just the name behind it and everything. So uh, stick around. Uh, I'll begin with a little bit of background, but first of all, Full Armor Crusader. I'm going to break the name down into two uh into two parts is how I came about the name. Uh, the first part I'm going to break down is going to be full armor. And yes, it comes from Ephesians chapter 6, um, where it talks about having to put on the full armor of God. That's something that has become very dear to me um, over, I would say, the past 20 years or so. Um, my career in law enforcement and my faith took a major collision together. And that happened in 2002. But uh, before I get into that, let me give you a little bit of background. I grew up, uh, my grandparents had me in church every Sunday. Typical Baptist church, uh, it's rural, typical Baptist church. Um, you know, it was pretty somber service, reverent and everything else. Um, I met my wife, we got married in 1996, and my wife was Assembly of God. So you can kind of imagine uh, uh, rural Baptist meets Assembly of God. Yeah, it kind of clashed a little bit, and we didn't know where to find a happy medium on that. And so fast forward, um, we, like I said, we got married in 96. I first went through the police academy in 99. And um, in 2002, I was working for a small Texas police department, and... Um, 2002 was a pretty rough year for my family. Uh, my dad had just got diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. Uh, my wife and I, we were we were struggling financially, trying to raise some kid, you know, two kids at the time, and you know, it was it was a very rough rough time, and we were we were going through some things. Well, the the small police department that I worked at had a warrant officer. He worked two days a week. He worked on Tuesdays and Thursdays. He was a retired um, officer from the sheriff's department, but he still worked, uh, you know, to keep his license in two days a week. But other than being a law enforcement officer and being, you know, that many years and being retired, his main job was that of a pastor. Uh, he had his own church. He came from Kentucky. But, um, he he actually took me under his wing, and I consider him a mentor to this day. But um, so he had a non-denominational church. Being from being Baptist, being raised Baptist, I had never seen anything as far as a charismatic non-denominational church before. So I, the best that I can tell you is. The first time that I went to a non-denominational, charismatic, Pentecostal, whatever you want to call it, church, scared me to death. I was, I, I was looking for the exits. I did not know what to do. But over time, like I said, this gentleman, this pastor, he took me under his wing, and you know, he taught me a lot about my faith. He taught me a lot about the uh, how a Christian should actually conduct themselves in law enforcement and how. You know, he, he showed me a different side to things, and I think that that's uh, where first, um, you know, for what, I'll just break it down. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 tells us, For we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. As a Christian law enforcement officer, you have two things that you're going to deal with. You have the, you know, the spiritual side that you're going to deal with, which is Ephesians chapter 6, and then you have flesh. You have spirit and flesh. There was two instances that really taught me, um, that actually intrigued my growth. And, the first, and I don't know which one came first. I, I think the, the situation at the church one evening, we were at a Wednesday night prayer meeting, and I had the opportunity to see someone truly delivered. And being this in an introductory video, I'm not going to go off into a whole bunch of, you know, different terminologies and what I'm talking about, but let's just say someone was delivered at that service. Scared me to death. As a young, gung-ho, 
you know, gun toting officer, you know, I'm thinking there's certain situations in life that you should be able to, to control. Well, I saw a situation that nobody could control. It took many people to control the situation. In fact, I, I, I went back to my, um, to my Baptist church that I was raised at and I talked to the pastor and I said, look, I said, this is what I saw. Is, is this, you know, what is this? And he told me, he said, well, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, this is not things that I'm going to preach about on a Sunday morning to a Baptist congregation. But yes, it's out there. Guys, what I'm talking about, I mean, good and evil exist in this world today. I mean, that's that's just the plain and simple truth. Well, uh, probably a little while after that, um, typical day at the police department, um, this guy got arrested. I wasn't an arresting officer. I was, I was not even around when this guy got arrested. But our local grocery store called and told us that, hey, we need you to come down here because we have a man that's filling out an application and something's just not right here. Long story short, you go down there, this guy, what we called 1096, mentally ill person, had filled out an application, local grocery store, and under his name, he had put that his name was Jesus Christ. He would not give anybody else his name, he, but he, in, he insisted upon everyone calling him Jesus Christ. Well, I'm not doing it. This other pastor, he was working that day. He's not doing it. We're, we're not going to play this guy's games. Well, long story short, he really hadn't committed a crime, but he's a danger to himself. So I got elected to take this guy to the psych doctor, and uh, ultimately we got him uh paperwork that we could take him to Rusk State Hospital. Now, if you're from Texas or if you know anything about Texas and mental health, Rusk State Hospital is a very, very spooky, scary place that it's a very old place, but it's for the criminally insane. Now, if you see things on Batman, Arkham Asylum, and Gotham, that's what Rusk State Hospital is in Texas. I mean, you can think of the worst of the worst and they take them to Rusk. So anyway, this guy was giving us problems all day long. I, he just if you if you didn't play the game that he wanted to play and call him the names that he wanted to be called, there was a couple instances that we had to use force. But that being said, I noticed something. Uh, when my pastor he he was around this individual, something changed. There was a, there was a difference in the attitude. And, um, and, and I saw more of a calming from the guy that we had labeled, you know, 1096, mentally insane, when the pastor was present. Now, today, as I'm shooting this video and I'm explaining what my channel and everything is going to be about, this is a stupid question to me, uh, but there are no stupid questions when you're growing and you're learning. So, but I asked him, I asked the pastor, I said, listen, I said, does he recognize who you are can can he tell can, can can he understand that you're a man of god your faith you know you've been a pastor at this point in time 40 something years I, I don't know how long but i mean it was a long time and he told me he said yeah he he can he can tell he can tell now when i'm talking about this individual and i'm talking about you know his actions and things there's a lot of things in this world that they call mentally ill mental episodes and things of that nature but guys i'm just going to be flat out honest with you you read ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 break it down and you know what we're dealing with okay and like i said i'm going to go into this in more videos i'm being a little bit vague and kind of dancing around the subject for a purpose right now i don't want to run anybody off but there's also scripture greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world think about that for a minute don't let that soak in. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. So this individual, whatever you want to say, yeah, he recognized the pastor for who he is. And later on, later on in my career, I, I, I kind of learned to deal with it. Now, people, I'm telling you straight up, don't go out looking for this stuff. Don't. And the pastor, he referred to it as don't go out with a super saint on your chest thinking you can take on you know, the world. But here's the thing. You have crime and you have crimes that are, why did this happen? How could this happen? Nobody in their 
right mind would actually do this. And in fact, as I'm shooting this video yesterday, there was news come out about a lady. I, she was probably in her 30s, took her young daughter, five or six years old, to the park and slit her throat, ex put her on her knees, slit her throat execution style. That's not human. That, there's there's no way that's human and and you know the other you know the other you have your school shootings your bomb these things I, I'm telling you and I'm not saying that everything that I'm talking about comes from a place of you know the Ephesians 6:12 but I'm gonna say a lot of things in this world are misdiagnosed and, and it's time that we you know as Christians we have to know what we're dealing with we have to know what we're fighting against. And like I said, Ephesians six twelve it tells us, For we wrestle not with flesh and blood, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, the spiritual wickedness in high places, I'm going to do another video on, and it's going to blow your mind, and it's, it's a whole subject in itself. But Ephesians six thirteen tells us what we can do about it. Put on the whole armor of God so you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Back up to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 and it says put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. That's 11. So basically chapter 11 tells you what you need to put on. Chapter 12 tells you what you're dealing with and then chapter 13 reemphasizes that ladies and gentlemen you need to put on the full the whole armor of God. Now, after Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, we go into uh, chapter 14 and all the way down to 17, and the, uh, there's also one in 18, but it talks about the elements of the armor and each individual piece of armor and actually what you need to do. So that, that's, that's where the uh, title for full armor comes in as far as full armor crusader. Now, I, I want to talk about the crusader part. If you look at what the Templars did in uh, starting around the 11th century, 10th century, they were a protector. They protected the weaker, the pilgrims that were going to Jerusalem, but they were also upholding the faith. And, and, and I'm not talking about being a crusader in, in the sense that they were back in the day, but I mean, if you stand a line as a Christian nowadays, you're a crusader because you're trying to uphold and hold on to what we have and uh, you know what's happening in the world I don't have to tell you I don't have to tell you we're under attack as a Christian nation um, or the values that we hold dear so number one I mean we've seen everything erode we've seen our rights being taken we've seen the first amendment attacked you know and it seems like that the First Amendment is actually there and counts for anyone else, but not Christians. If you want to stand up and talk about Jesus, you can't do that. But anybody else can stand up and talk about just anything else they want to. But we we don't have that right in the public arena, it seems like, because we get, we get, you know, it's just they don't want us to do it. So, and it, yeah, I don't even have, that's a whole subject for itself, and I'm probably just rambling at this point on this situation. But anyway, so you put on the full armor of God, the whole armor of God, and then you stand for something, and, and you try to protect what's, you know, the morals and morality that we have. So there we have, and we've pushed it together, full armor crusader. Now, as far as what I want this channel to become and what I want it to be, I want to talk about current events. I want to talk about things that's going on. I'm maybe even mix in a little bit of prophecy in the situations that we talk about. But um, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, and you know, a lot of my wife and I we watch homestead and prepping videos, and you know, talking about how to live off your land and garden. But I see these people get on there and all they want to do is talk about doom and gloom. It seems to the fact that they want to wake up in the morning and that's all they do. Every day they get on their YouTube channel and they're talking about, oh, the end is near, the end is near. Well, I don't hear anybody saying the good part about the end is near. The, the fact that we're having these birth pains and the talks about it in Revelations, yeah, the end is near. 
our Savior is coming back soon. But I don't hear them talking about that. I don't hear them preparing everybody for that. So, you know, and I, that's the that's the uh, direction that I kind of want to take my videos. I, I'll do a little bit of that kind of prepping, maybe homesteading, letting you know what we're doing. But I also want to take it in the direction of, hey, our redemption draws nigh. You know, um, come quickly, Lord Jesus. That that's revelations. You know, and. The world is a scary place, but we know what's happening and we know who wins. So the other part that I want to talk about too is, and I kind of referenced this earlier, I, I'm going to call it um, the 612 files, the Ephesians 612 files. I want to take newspaper articles or things out of the headlines and discuss them and kind of break them down and like this lady from... Houston area that takes her child five or six years old takes her to the park and um, in, in the it, I'll just go ahead and tell you a little bit about it the, the child survives the child for, for was pronounced dead at the hospital but in the instance somehow this lady had a moment of clarity and drove her child to the hospital and I've seen this before I, I've seen this with uh individuals that I dealt with and you know I, I've seen it talked about with this article here that oh they're going to call it a mental episode or they're going to call it this or they're going to call it that things like this occur to where people's minds are and I'm going to say it this way released and they come back to their senses we all we've all heard that kind of story well, this lady, if she's, and, and I'm not saying this is what happened, but in this instance, she goes out to the park. She does what she does. The damage is done, but then all of a sudden she comes back to her senses. Her mind is released. She's looking at the situation. Oh my, what have I done? I've got to get my child to the hospital. There are a lot, and, and people don't talk about it. People don't it's not these things are not put into the newspapers you just have a lot of cut and dry things but it hap it, it happens more than you think so that that's the one instance that i was going to kind of bring out but like i said i'll talk about more of that in other videos i just wanted to give a nutshell of kind of where i wanted to take these uh, channels so far but stick around this is going to be a very interesting um channel and i hope to do a lot of good things with it and hope you enjoy it so i'm going to do the old cliche here like subscribe and get notifications and share it but uh until next time keep your armor on thank you for watching